to Voices at CFMA, Construction Financial Management Association's brand new podcast featuring conversations with our members. I'm your host, Kate Platt, CFMA's Marketing Coordinator. This month, I'm joined by Chief Financial Officer of Austin Industries out of Dallas, Texas, former CFMA Chairman and Certified Construction Industry Professional, Joe McLaughlin. All right, let's get into it. Thanks for making time for us, Joe. Great. Glad to be here, Kate. So how did you exactly get into construction accounting, construction finance? Well, I found a great opportunity in construction, uh, knowing it was an evolving and, and growing business here in the Dallas-Fort Worth area, and got a job as a job cost accountant uh, for a very large uh, general contractor here in Dallas, and uh, stayed in the industry the majority of my career. All right. And... Uh... You know what brought you into CFMA? Well, that's that's a <laughs> that's an interesting story. Um, <laughs> I was uh, invited to play in a golf tournament um, probably a year after I started here at Austin. Been in Austin for about eighteen years, and was invited to play in that local golf tournament. Uh, there at the golf tournament, you know, I met several of my peers in the industry, folks that I've talked to on the phone, um, uh, surety representative, bankers. Um, a lot of the people that that spoke the same language that I did, um, and was and was really interested in the same industry that I worked in, um, so it really uh, tied the bow. And um, before I knew it, I was a I was a member on the board of the Dallas Fort Worth chapter. <laughs> you blink and suddenly you're sucked into all the fun we have here, huh? That's true. I mean, it's really quick because you rose your way through chapters and then straight on through to exec and all the way up to chairman. Yeah, it was, ex it was exciting. I, I got a lot out of it. I would say you get, um, you get out of it what you put into it. Um, we have a, a great uh, chapter here in the Dallas-Fort Worth area. Um, a lot of folks that have mentored me throughout my career. And I think that's the best part of CFMA was the mentoring that I got from the past presidents within our local chapter, um, the events, uh, the strategic planning, all that went into the, the, the folks that founded our chapter um, in, in the early days. And it really, um, I, I wasn't even aware until I attended Spring Creek before I became president of the chapter, um, how much of a national perspective that there was within CFMA. Um, as much as we did locally, that's, that's where I really thought CFMA was. And it wasn't until Spring Creek um, in Arizona um, when I found that there was a, a, a lot more to do, uh, national committees, um, an executive committee, and then, and then officers. All right. I mean, that's interesting that you, you kind of didn't really see the full picture until Spring Creek. So uh, what is the best piece of advice you've been given throughout your career that, you know, really has stuck with you? You know, that was, that's a, that's a great, great question. Um, I'd say the best piece of advice that, that I've ever be, been given was to be self-aware. I think it's really important of how you show up um, to others, how others view you, um, what people really think of you, think of your leadership style. Um, it goes back to your character, your feelings, your motives. Um, if, if you don't have that self-awareness characteristic and, and really know how you show up to not only your employees, but your family um, and other folks um, that you might network with, um, it, 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 it could be eye-opening. <laughs> it, it definitely can. It definitely can. Um, is, is this the piece of advice you give your new hires or is there something else that you try to impart on them too? You know, I would say that, that, that when I find someone that's new to the industry, um, I, I really ask them not to focus on a career path, position by position, uh, thinking they have to go to step one, step two, step three. But it's really of building your tool belt and having the right tools within your tool belt for doing, doing your job. Um, you know, you should always look for responsibilities. How, how can you take on new responsibilities? Um, you know, you're not going to get uh, promoted just sitting at your desk or hiding behind emails. Um, what I would always suggest to someone is, is be a problem solver. Um, be a person that people want to go to and, and know that, that you're the person that can get things done for whatever, whatever the task may be. Just, you know, I, I, I've definitely heard that advice in my career often. 
you know, there's no such thing as that's not in my job description. <laughs> you, you go and you look and you seek and you learn, right? Well, that's, that's correct. You know, I would say you, you hit it right there on the head. Um, seek and learn. You know, I would say talk to peers, talk to your managers. You know, it surprises me how often that you talk to people or look to people in an organization that they don't even know all the people within their area, on their floor, within their building. Um, you can learn so much from coworkers. Uh, you, you could be mentored um, and not even be aware of it. Um, it. It's just, it's really important to, to have those continual conversations um, and uh, uh, be in front of people. Definitely, you know, great advice to anyone at any point. You know, I know that we were focusing on new to the industry and new hires, but I, there's a fair share of people who are 10, 20, 50 years into this that, you know, can definitely take that advice and go with it. So awesome. Thank you, Joe. Um, and just one last thing, you know, it's no secret that you're a huge advocate and champion for the Institute, the ICCIFP. Uh, could you tell us more about why you're so passionate, why, you know, you're pushing your staff to become certified and what that means since August is uh, CCIFP month? Yeah, you know, thanks for bringing that up. I, I would say that I am extremely passionate about the, the Institute and the exam itself. You know, I utilized all the study material when I was preparing for the exam, um, online material, networking with uh, uh, other peers, uh, local folks in my chapter just encouraging me to, uh, to take the test. Um, but the exam tests um, eight knowledge domains from income recognition, accounting reporting, budget planning, tax, risk management, legal perspective, human resources, and IT areas. Um, within each one of these areas, I, I realize that it's extremely critical um, for my staff to understand the fundamental functionality of, of a construction company. And these concepts, you know, you don't really learn all of them in school. You don't learn them in detail in school. You know, I would say um, cost accounting or, or percent complete um, is, just a, is just a small piece of the CPA exam and a small piece of curriculum in college, so so it's really important to to gain these uh, to gain this knowledge not only from CFMA but to be tested um, at the institute. Um, you know, as a leader in the accounting and finance division of my organization, you know, I felt like it was critical that that the individuals that reported to me um, one and two tiers down um, really had a good foundation in all of those areas. A lot of them had the concepts in the background in accounting and reporting budget, income recognition, but it was those other ca um, categories of risk management, legal, HR, that, that the accounting department's not always very strong in. And so it was uh, kind of opened my eyes that this was a great opportunity um, to kind of level the playing field for my um, staff. You know, I don't need uh, uh, an organization of CPAs, but I do need an organization of CCIFPs that everyone knows what's going on. I would say that um, I've made it a requirement within my organization to be a manager or hire that you, you must demonstrate by passing the exam. You know, what it does to me is it provides evidence that the, all my managers have that minimum competency that, you know, that the institute, you know, that periodically they meet and do a job task analysis and make sure that the exam tests what current managers or, or CFMs uh, should be required to do. So, so I'm really comfortable that the exam uh, hits all of the areas that I want my uh, staff to be um, proficient in. You know, I would say that um, the new employee owners that come to work for me, um, they're all told about the requirement. I, I think they're encouraged with it. They like to see growth. They like to see um, where people can develop. This gives them an opportunity to develop. And what I would tell you is that, um, is not only does it help them develop, but it keeps them within the industry. You know, accounting is one of those things that can be done across, you know, although we're in construction, um, you know, healthcare, uh, education, uh, banking, all these other industries have accountants. But if I can get my folks to um, pass a certified construction um, professional exam, then I've got the hooks in them to stay within the industry. They may not finish their careers here at Austin Industries, but it, it kind of, uh, gives them the opportunity to stay within the industry. 
So your passion for the certification really ties back to your the best advice you've ever been given and the best advice you can give is, you know, that self-awareness and that, that seeking and desire to learn, um, you know, you can sit for that exam and maybe not pass for that first time. And suddenly I'm not the, the, the professional I thought I was. And, you know, as someone who has definitely failed before, it's, it's a, it's a strange reality check. Um, but at the same time, you know, it's, it's something that is going to push you to learn and go further and grow as a, as a CFM. No, I appreciate you saying that. I, I think that that's really eye opening for folks is that, you know, one of the reasons why I like that I put that carrot out there for our managers is the fact that that is that hurdle that they need to overcome. Do, have they mastered those, uh, minimum level of foundation required to, to, to be a CFM? And, you know, the Institute has done a great job, um, you know, identifying those characteristics and testing that and, and benchmarking what that level is. Um, and it does, it does give that wake up call to folks. They may not think that they're um, where they were, but it gives them something to work towards um, and, and goals to, uh, um, to meet in the future. Which is, you know, all really anyone should ever want is, goals and a plan and, you know, something to work towards, which is, you know, a great reason to get involved with the Institute and a great reason for everyone to go get certified. Oh, I, I agree. I, I, have, I am on the bandwagon of certification. <laughs> well, Joe, thank you so much for taking time to talk to us about, you know, getting into construction finance and, you know, getting advice and, going and getting your certification so hopefully you've inspired a few people to to reflect on themselves and go find some more education and you know maybe we're going to see a few more um ccifp holders uh this time next year i'd love to see the numbers increase thanks for listening if you're interested in becoming a certified construction industry financial professional make sure you check out cfma.org forward slash ccifpmonth.cfm. That's all for this time. Join us next month when we sit down with Patsy Anderson Dunn to talk about her career and her connection with suicide prevention. If you enjoyed this podcast, don't forget to like and subscribe and share on social media. Mm -hmm.